Hi, this is Mashnu and here is game 2 of this series, Great Chess Miniatures. Um, I've chosen this time for a game that was played by Robert James Fisher, the famous Bobby Fisher. In 1963 he was playing with White here against Grandmaster Ruben Fine. Now I must say that this game is a blitz game. It was played in a blitz tournament in Manhattan. And believe it or not, Fisher won this game in only 10 moves. So let's have a look at what happened here. White plays e4, e5, knight to f3, d6. This is the so called Philidor defense. It's known as a very solid defense, but well, not in this game. White replied d4, theoretical move, knight to d7, bishop c4 placing this bishop on a very important diagonal c6 castling king side bishop to e7 now white takes on e5 and black retakes now until now nothing special has happened this is a theoretical line and the most played move here is uh, knight to g5 but in the game Fisher played the surprising queen to e2 with the idea of going with the rook to d1 to pin this knight on d7. Let's have a short look by the way at this knight to g5, the most played move in this position. Um, it looks at first sight as if this is a blunder because black can take this knight but white has queen to h5 threatening checkmate on f7 and threatening to retake on g5 so here after queen to e7 bishop takes g5 follows knight to f6 uh, saves uh, against the, the, the most uh, threats but still white has a pleasant position um, he has white has the initiative and is ahead in the development so it, it, it's, um, it's a, a nice position for white but anything can happen here. Let's go back to the game now. Queen to e2. The big surprising move. In this blitz game it was very difficult for black to find the correct reaction. He answered knight g2 of 6 and Fischer replied rook to d1. Now here um, of course white is threatening to take this, this pawn on e5 so black decided to get out of this pin by moving queen to c7 looks very logical but in fact here white already has a very strong continuation knight to g5 was played now threatens to take on f7 and this threat is not a very uh, small one because after, just imagine that white is here to move, then bishop takes f7 check. If the king goes to d8, then knight e6 is checkmate. If after bishop takes f7 the king goes to f8, then knight e6 check wins the queen. So black must do something against this. And a very natural looking move is castle and king side. That's, this is what happened in the game. It looks as if black is doing okay and is defending well, but the next move was bishop takes f7 check. And here black had to resign. Um, let's have a look at the possible continuations. There are two options for black. One is to take the bishop with the rook and the other one is to move the king aside to uh, h8. Let's have a look at rook takes f7. In that case, queen to c4 follows. Pinning the rook, threatening to take it, and there is not really a very good uh, way for, for, for black now to, to react. This rook is simply going to fall. For example, if knight to b6, queen takes a 7 check, king h8, and now retreat the queen to b3, threatening a check on f7. Um, I believe you must know this uh, this this famous uh, checkmate with 
this sacrifice on g8. So let's well let, let me just uh, show it to you just to just to to see what what happens. I, I'm sure that most of you have seen this idea that this check here on h6. If the king goes to f8, then there is checkmate on f7. So he must go back and then follows queen to g8 check. And if a rook takes g8, there is a checkmate now on f7. Well, that's something a pattern that most uh, players recognize. So, well, here in this position, if um, Black wants to prevent this uh, this checkmate, he must play something like uh, h6. But still, the position is uh, is much better for uh, for White. He can even continue attacking with knight takes h6 if uh, oops sorry if this is taking here there's queen f7 killing absolutely killing okay let's return now to see what could happen if the king goes to h8 well in that case the knight enters on e6 forking queen and rook if the queen moves away, then knight takes f8. Black can retake. And then this is the result. Well, in fact, we can say that white has won the exchange and black doesn't have any compensation for this. The position of the black king can become vulnerable as well, and it's not very difficult for white to finish the development. Mm, at a certain point, uh, perhaps this, this knight can go to d2 knight d2 followed by knight to, to c4 or perhaps queen to c4 right now those kind of things well in any case it's uh, it's, it's, it's just material without any compensation and that's why um, Ruben Fine resigned here well perhaps many of us would continue playing in a blitz game to try to save this but that's what happens at amateur level but if your opponent is named Robert James Fisher it's useless to continue playing this position alright I hope you enjoyed this uh, this, ga this game this example and uh, I'll see you next time on YouTube